I teased you about what the next part was going to be and that it was going to be fun, and it is. We are going to work on this part of the body up here, and it is going to use a stitch that is called turkey work. I also call it the fringe stitch, and it is a really versatile, super neat stitch. And so before I do it on here, I'm going to show you just the basic stitch, and then we'll come back and we'll do it here. Turkey work uh, can also be called the Giordis knot, um, but in my head I tend to call it the fringe stitch. But when you say turkey work, it has nothing to do with the bird. It really is related to the um, knots used for Turkish rugs. So, but let's just call it the fringe stitch for now. And it's super fun for embroidery because it has a lot of different uses depending on what you do with it. But let me just show you the basic technique. It's really just a series of loops that are, you know, locked in at the bottom. And then you can leave them as loops or you can trim them and you can leave them or fluff them. It, that's why it's so versatile. But let me show you the basic, just the basic turkey work or fringe stitch. So you come up. You're going to hold this thread above. Let's just pretend you have a line right here, although we're going to do ours in a circle later, but let's just do it in a line here. And you're going to go down. But now, so I'm going to hold that loop like that, but now I need to lock the, this bottom edge of the loop. So I'm going to come back across here. And I'm going to put a little locking stitch across both of those. Now, when I first start, I'm really going to I'm going to put two little stitches across there to really lock it in place. All right, so that's that's really locked down. So now I'm going to you can you know you can vary how where you put your loops, like how close they are. I tend to come up inside the previous loop, so I'm going to come up. Hold that thread above and go down right next to the end of the previous stitch. So I'm going to hold that loop like that. I'm going to come up right at the bottom, right, right where I came up before, and I'm going to put one little, if you can see that better, I'm going to put a little stitch right across that stitch to lock it in place. See that little locking stitch? So now I like to come up again. So if that was my, let me get that one out of the way. If that's my loop, I now come up inside that loop. Hold that one out of the way. Come down right next to it. Hold the loop in place. Put a locking stitch. You can also well, really, I, this is really the best way to do it. I just like to come up inside, in, in the center of the previous loop, and then go down right next to it, and a locking stitch. Whoops. So see, I pulled too hard, and I pulled that loop, you know, almost down through. So I'm just going to pull it back up, and then put my locking stitch. So as you keep going across, if you want to just tell yourself, you know, it's like loop and lock. So there's my loop. There's the lock. There's the loop. There's the lock. All right. So if you were doing this stitch, um, as like a flower and you wanted it to remain as loops, you would be very careful about how high each of these loops was. You would be careful to make sure that they were all, you know, identical or as, as identical as you could make them. I was not being that careful because I am going to be trimming these. And, um, uh, you know, you don't want to have the loops be super long because you'll just, especially if you're trimming them, because you're just going to waste all that thread. This is a stitch that uses a lot of thread, so be prepared for that. I wouldn't use my most expensive thread ever on a huge piece that had all, you know, because all turkey work, because it uses up a lot of thread. It's a thread eater. 
but um, I really just if I'm gonna know I know if, if I know I'm gonna be trimming them I just hold I just make the loop large enough definitely make the loop larger you know taller than you know you want to trim it like if you want to trim to a quarter of an inch later on then make sure your loops are at least maybe a half an inch these are a teeny bit longer than half an inch but I was not being super careful because I'm going to be trimming these really pretty short but the main thing is to make sure that that locking stitch is very secure at the bottom of your loop like that. Let's discuss number of strands. Um, for this one I'm using three strands but there have been many times where I've used six strands to do this because it's it gives you a really nice full. You can sort of see with three strands if I was going to do this as like flower petals it's a little bit scant you know it's a little bit thin uh, but you can also you know do multiple rows um, you, you know more rows you do like you, you know you would do a row below this and a row below that 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 will increase the obviously the um, thickness but generally I have used six strands and it looks really nice obviously you have to use a bigger needle and all that but um, for what I'm going to be doing later on I'm using three strands because I know I'm going to be packing in some rows uh, really close together along with another thicker yarn later on so I don't need quite as much bulk. Once you have finished making all of your loops unless you're leaving them as flower petals you're going to come back and snip each loop and this is why it's so important because you're going to be pulling on them that's why it's so important to make sure that locking stitch is really tight so just snip each loop and then you've got fringe. See how many uses that could be. You know, you can trim your fringe this way. Be very careful not to uh, trim your, um, you know, cut a hole in your fabric with these super sharp scissors. And you have to you know, just give it a little haircut. So that's really fun for fringe, like if you were stitching a rug or, you know, a llama that had um, you know decoration on it or just all sorts of things hair for you know for a, a, if you were doing a woman or a man so that's one reason that French stitch is really fun the other cool thing about it is you can trim it quite a bit shorter or leave it long doesn't matter either one works but the thing about it now not quite so much because I have so few stitches here but if I had, let me get all of that off. This does pr produce a lot of fuzz, just warning you. But the other thing is, once you get, you know, a couple of rows in and the more stitches you do, if you keep just kind of working it, you can also carefully take your scissors. And if you keep fluffing it and kind of working at it and you can even get like a little bitty comb, you know, like an eyebrow comb or something, and just gently keep fluffing it up. The more you do this, if you just keep kind of agitating it, see how much I can get this these few strands to fluff up. But the fluffier it gets, the more you agitate it. You know, you can use your fingers. That works too. And you can see all that little fluff that's coming off on the fabric. I mean you can just keep doing this. If you have a lot of thread it doesn't take quite so long to look as fluffy but maybe you can see there. Again be careful with your scissors don't cut your fabric. The more you work at it the fluffier it gets. So that's when it comes in really cool for like fur. Alright so see how much fun that is? So, so many things you can do with the French stitch. Now that we know basically how to make the French stitch or turkey work, let's apply it to this moth. And we are going to be going around in circles. I'm going to use two different colors of DMC and then yarn in the center. And that has a little bit of a different technique, but I'll show you that when we get there. 
and I'm using three strands. And um, let me talk again about why we're doing this now before the beating. I think if you saw in that little video a minute ago all that fuzz that was produced as I was fluffing it up, this is going to produce a ton of that fuzz. And if you have all those beads on there, um, that fuzz just gets into everything. So it's really easier to do this now um, before all the beads are on so that you're not trying to just get all that fuzz out from in between beads. To start this part, uh, I think you can see that my fabric right here didn't really come all the way up to that, that line, the pattern line. That's okay. That's going to be covered up. And even though there is a pattern line, when I do my first ring of the fringe stitch, I am not going to put my stitches exactly on that line because after we trim and fluff this section, that fluffy stuff is going to stick out beyond, you know, outside. I mean, it'll be good because it'll cover that fabric, but it's going to stick out outside of that ring. And if I put my stitches directly on that dark line, they might, by the time I trim them, they might stick out a little bit too much. So I'm just going to make my first row of turkey work just inside that black line. So if I were to get a pen, I mean, I, there's no reason for you to mark this line, but I'm just trying to show you if so where I'm actually, you know, even though that is the pattern line where I'm actually going to s put my line of stitching is going to be probably about like that. But there's no reason to put all those lines because it really just gets confusing with so many rings and so many lines. I'm starting out with the dark pink because I want to make this section look, have like some shading on the outside edge and then it gets lighter on the inside. So that's why I'm starting out with the dark pink. And I am going to start, there will be a diagram that will show you, you know, where to put each line of each color. But I'm going to start out with a dark ring, you know, a ring all the way around this in the dark pink. Or the, whatever that is. Yeah, it's dark pink. It doesn't really matter where you start. But I'm just, I don't know, I'm going to start right there. And I'm going to hold my loop up. Don't need to leave a huge loop because I'm really going to be trimming those off close. And this is the part where that very first loop I'm going to make sure that I really lock down. Maybe use two stitches to lock down that first loop just to be safe. All right, so there's my first loop. Now I'm going to come up inside that loop hold my second loop, come down, and I'm going to try to make these loops as, you know, small as I can without, you know, losing control of them, because I'm trying to, I just don't want to waste all that thread. That's why I said I wouldn't, I wouldn't make these loops, you know, an inch or an inch and a half, because all that's going to be trimmed off. I just need enough to hold it down with my finger like that. I'm trying to keep my finger out of the way so you can see. I said before, I just sort of had this little, this little saying in my head. I just do loop and lock. Come back inside that loop. Make a loop. And lock. And you know, a lot of times I'm really careful not to split stitches, you know, have the needle come up inside another stitch, but it, that really does not matter. And in fact, sometimes it helps on this because it, if you're coming up inside, you know, the stitch that you just made, like for instance, so here's my locking stitch that way. And I'm going to come back to the center. If I were to come up inside, like to split that little locking stitch, see if I can make it happen. I'm not sure I can. Maybe that's a little bit. That's okay. It actually just helps to anchor that stitch a little bit more. So I'm going to go all the way around this circle. Well, it's not quite an exact circle, but 
all the way around all the way around this shape with right now with one complete ring of dark pink. First ring of the French stitch is done and it goes all the way around. And let me show you the color chart that shows you which colors to use where and it's might be look a little confusing at first but this is the the two rings for the dark pink and you can see this I've already done the outside ring and you can see this the second ring is not a complete ring I'm just going to start I'm just going to leave like a gap up there and go around and then the next thing I will do is do two rings of the light or the medium pink um, so let me do this second ring and so I'll just start right underneath about right about right there actually you know I like to work the other direction so I am going to start over here and do the exact same thing that I just did making my loops all the way around just like I did for that first ring I am just about to finish up the second ring of light green or medium pink what I'm sorry not green medium pink thread and I'll show you on here so I've done I'm just about finished with this inside ring and at this point with all these loops you can see why this stitch makes a great flower stitch because if you just left it like that it's a very pretty flower but at this point it becomes a lot about loop management because as you're pulling your needle back down into the fabric it's really easy to catch these other loops and pull them through and you don't really want to do that so much so what I always try to do is I, I'm trying to constantly sort of use my other fingers to hold the other loops out of the way so I'm about to make this loop here and go down and here's the part where the, the other loops can get caught like let's see if, if it gets caught like that or the ones next to it so I'm trying to I kind of try to keep them flat and I keep a finger there and I'm just constantly sort of smoothing them down so that they don't catch any of those other threads let me get to the end here And, you know, this is all going to be covered up. So these stitches don't have to be just like perfectly neat or all perfectly evenly spaced. It's just they're all going to be covered up by a bunch of fuzz. So just trying to get threads, a bunch of threads that you can trim off and then fluff up. So let me do maybe two more loops. back to the beginning where I started so that's the second ring of the lighter pink and now we get to fill in the center section the fun thing that we're going to do in the center here is we're still going to do the fringe stitch sort of but we're not going to use thread we're going to use yarn and when I saw this very like fluorescent super bright pink yarn I knew I had to use it somehow and but since it's so thick you can't I mean you probably could use a big needle and you could probably force it through your fabric but there's really not a need to what we're going to do is basically like a fake fringe stitch we'll just call it faux fringe so we'll just make it fancy right so I still have, this is the needle that I was using that has the light pink, medium pink thread that I just finished up this ring. And so I haven't even knotted it or anything. I'm just going to use the same needle and thread because I still have a nice, good, pretty good length of thread left. 
And I'm really just going to, I don't really know how to explain this other than you just kind of make a little, a little loop down there at the end. And then you're going to sew that loop to the fabric. And it is the most important thing about this part is that you sew, put your needle through the yarn. You don't want to have the um, the thread that you're attaching this yarn to. Let me see if I can try to explain this. You don't want to put the, the thread over the loop like this. Does that make does that make sense? You don't want it to go over. You need it to go through the yarn. And I actually end up making two stitches on each loop down here on the fabric to really hold it in place because it's kind of a loose twist. And I really, so that when I tug on this later, which we're going to be doing a lot of tugging, so if I tug on it, it's not going to come loose. If I just, so in other words, so now let me pr proceed. I'm going to make another loop like that. Kind of just have to kind of find your rhythm here in a minute. I'm just going to make another loop. All right, so there's my second loop that's up against the fabric. I'm going to try to get it close to that first one. So there's my little loop. If I just bring the needle up and go over that loop. See what happens when I pull on this? It, even if the thread's tight, it can move. It won't be stable. It won't stay in place. So instead of going over the yarn, I'm going to definitely try to go through the yarn. So I'm going to make a stitch right there and then another stitch just for good measure. So now when I pull on that, it doesn't shift. It doesn't move at all from where I put it. So the thing to do now is just fill in this whole center section with just a bunch of these wavy loops. And um, you know how close to get together to get them, it's just like before, it doesn't matter how long the length is of the loops because we're going to be trimming them way down. Again, you don't want them, you don't need them to be, you know, that long. That just wastes yarn. I mean, you're just, you might end up not having enough. So just make them about the same length as the loops of your thread that you were doing before, just roughly. So that one, I actually did not go through the yarn. I'm going to go the through, through the yarn there. And then I'm going to do it again because that one's really not very stable. Make sure I go through both sides right there. So that one is secure. So now I'm just going to go around here and I'm going to sort of work in a spiral um, to start. But by the end, I'm really just trying to make sure that all of this orange fabric is covered with pink loops that are attached. So I'm going to go do that now and I will show you what it looks like. I've done kind of sort of one ring around the outside, but I did want to say that as you work towards the center, I don't necessarily want these these uh, yarn loops to be flat like this. I do want to have them stand up straight a little bit more or less in the center. So instead of constantly, you know, pushing them flat and doing a loop and stitching a loop, you know, like this, I'm going to start to try to kind of, and you know, even though you don't necessarily get them to stand up right, you know, stand up straight right now, um, when you fluff them, they will, but I'm just going to try my hardest to get those loops at the bottom where I'm going to sew them to be close together, but also not necessarily on their sides, if that makes sense. So now I'm, I'm kind of, I'm starting to fill in the center. So I'm really just going to come up and put a piece down and sew that one piece of yarn down. Again, I'm going to still do two stitches to really make sure it's secured, making sure I go through the yarn. And now I'm going to come up and make a loop and then go down. So that one piece of yarn that comes back down and touches the fabric. So 
So the goal is for it to be, you know, very pretty tightly packed in here. When you trim it, you know, later on we're going to clip these and fluff it and so it will kind of all, you know, fluff together, but I don't want any big, you know, empty holes or kind of thin spots. I do want it to be nice and thick. Ooh, kind of hard to see what I'm doing right there. So keep doing these sort of upright pieces of yarn until the whole center is filled in. It's pretty tightly packed. I've sewn down all of my loops. Here is the last, you know, what was left at the very end, so I can just snip that off. But now comes the really messy part. And it's also, I, I can never tell if this is the really, really fun part or if it's really intimidating. And it's it's really a little bit of both because now what we're going to do is we're going to give this thing a complete haircut. We're just going to trim it all off. And for this particular one, we're going to trim it a lot. So the first thing I always do is I come through and I um, clip all the loops. Now you can start with the yarn. You know, I guess you have to clip the loops because we're going to end up trimming them all off anyway. But it does kind of, I don't know, it just starts to give you a little bit better idea, you know, what you're trying to do. So I'm going to keep trimming all of these loops. And this is where it's good to have maybe a sort of a small pair of embroidery scissors. I mean, you can use a big pair, but you get a little bit more control. I'm using my really good quality embroidery scissors. You could use something like this. This is a small pair. Um, or if you've got stork scissors, which I have those in my shop, those are really cool. Those are nice and sharp and small. But it's, you just need something sharp. But you do have to be very careful, especially as we progress here, that I'm not going to take the tip of these scissors and, you know, jam it into my fabric. That always makes me very nervous that I'm going to do that. So I think that's all the yarn, but now what I need to do is trim the loops of the thread underneath. And so that's getting really close to the fabric, so I'm going to be super careful with that. And I also don't want to jam the scissors in there so far that I, you know, clip any of the the locking stitches. I'm trying to be very careful with my angles. Sometimes it's I'm trying to do this so you guys can see it, but sometimes I I am holding the hoop and I'm kind of angling my scissors up so I'm not angling them down, you know, towards the fabric, but just whatever you do be super careful. Not to make a big hole in your fabric. So I got a bunch of loops under there that aren't trimmed yet. Pull those away from the fabric. So I'm getting kind of close over there. And once you get them all pretty much trimmed, the loops. Okay, you can see I'm already starting to get some fuzz. But now we're going to really give it a haircut. I mean like a lot because you can see if it's when it's so long it kind of obliterates the head up here and I don't want to do that and I want it to have but I want it to have not a flat you know appearance like a profile I want it to be rounded. So I am going to work to trim keep the center kind of rounded and trim these under here so that they're really really close to the edge. But I can start by trimming off some of this length because it's kind of getting in my way. I can't really, you know, I obviously I don't want the top part to be this long. So I'm going to really give it a haircut. I will, I will keep trimming that. This will not be the final length. And I just always sort of continually work around I don't just keep trimming in one area over and over and over and over because suddenly that area will be way, way too... Oops, sorry, didn't mean to bump that. I'm trying to move my chair to get to where I can see this better. 
Sorry about that. Make you see sick. Um, so I try to sort of keep my scissors sort of flat, not cutting down so much, but just sort of flat against all of this. And then all I can say now is just keep carefully trimming. You know, I, I right now this is in a stand, and this is maybe one time where it's good to not have it in a stand where you can uh, hold it in your other hand and change the angle of it and, you know, get under here without, you know, you can change the angle of the hoop without having to strain your hand so much. And this is going to create a ton of fuzz. You can already see it's all over everywhere. And this is one of the reasons that I did not want to do this before you did all of the beading because all this fuzz is just going to get into everything. We're going to have to clean it off later. And the more beads are on there, the more it's just going to, all that fuzzy dust is going to get down into the beads. So I am going to go keep giving this a haircut. The trick is to know how much to cut and when to stop. So just be patient, keep working at it. Um, you can sort of use, you know, how much of the moth is being, you know, covered up that you can't see. Like if you still can't see the head, like see up here, you still can't see the head. So this is still way, way too long. I want to get that really short so that I'm not covering up that head that we stitched earlier. So I'm just going to keep trimming. All right. Try to be patient. Figure out when to stop. And we will come back and take a look at this. And here it is all trimmed up. I, I, really like where I got it to. Um, I may end up trimming it a little bit more, but you know, I got it to a place where I really like it. And sometimes when you keep going, it's good. And sometimes it's like you keep trimming and it ends up being bald. So I think I'm going to leave it like this for a while. I really like the way the, um, the DMC thread, the different textured and colored thread shows um, around the edges. And I did that by making sure when I was trimming the yarn that I would like here on the edges, I would pick up just the yarn. I would sort of pull it away from the DMC and trim the yarn more than just like chopping off the whole side as a whole um, so that the different texture of the DMC shows through and the, diff and the darker colors so it looks darker around the edges. Um, the whole time I was stitching, I was like fluffing and pulling. You have to pull, you know, blow on it and pull that fluff away. Um, you're going to end up with a ton of fluff, you know, little lint all over your piece. So if you want to clean up some of that, just get a piece of regular tape and just stick it all, just press it down, be a little gentle with what you just, you know, you can sort of clean that up, but just trim, uh, I mean, just um, stick the tape down and that'll pick up all that extra lint. I don't know if you can see that. It's got pink all over it. So that will help you clean up your fabric. Hopefully you are not covered in fluff as well. And um, because I was, like I said, as, as I was trimming, I was like moving it around and, you know, trying to see what I was doing. I did that a whole lot to it. So that just sort of naturally fluffed it up. But I did um, particularly try up here to make sure that I, that the head was not covered up. So I trimmed up here like this yarn, I mean, this thread up here is like not even an eighth of an inch. It's like really short. Down here, with these, you can see it's longer. Like, let me pull it up. Like, see that? See that thread under there, how long it is? So it's much longer than it is up here because I really didn't want to cover that head up. And um, I think it's okay. I don't think it's covering up too much of the design around here. But uh, like I said, that's why I may trim a little more off. And sometimes as you mess with it, more little ends kind of come to the front and you have to sort of trim those off. But anyway, I, I like where it is. Um, that's, you know, how when to stop is kind of that part fear, part fun. And um, But I know I had fun doing it and I hope you had fun doing it as well.